All right, disclaimer. This is a personal YouTube channel. Any views or opinions represented in this YouTube channel are personal and solely belong to me as the owner and do not represent those people, organizations, or institutions that I or may not be associated with in professional or personal capacity unless explicitly stated. Any views or opinions are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, or any individual. Okay, so let's go now to the baseline categories. So the baseline category should have a physical, um, biological, social, economic, and political. Um, as, as you can remember, I actually explained this last meeting to the, um, and you still remember the, the, the illustration with um, octagons, was it octagons? Uh, heptagon or was it an heptagon in which um, the ecosystem tends to have these different components. So the physical, biological, social, economic, and political. We also have actually the cultural, as I can remember. So um, in which um, with the physical, of course, it will involve the air. So this is actually belongs to the attribute of the environment. So we can have the diffusion factor, um, the atmospheric uh, stability, mixing depth, wind speed, precipitation, humidity, topography. We can also have the particulate matter, which is the 24-hour um, Arith arithmetic mean um, concentration. We also have uh, on air our sulfur oxide. Uh, what is the concentration of our sulfur oxide and um, as expressed in 24 hour? We also have hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons is a 24 hour average and not 24 hours. And of course, we also have our nit nitrogen oxide, which is the average annual concentration, the ambient air. Um, just a few weeks ago, I read a report from EMB that the air quality in Tacloban City is actually, um, a, is actually on a good level. So, um, in which that means our ambient air in Tacloban City is not yet polluted. And that's very good. Of course, under air, again, we have carbon monoxide, photochemical oxidants, um, hazardous toxicants, others. Um, yeah, so those are um, the main um, pollutants in our air. Let's go now to the water. So we, all, we have um, surface water and groundwater. So watershed hydrology, um, we have to include stream flow discharge measurements, lake inflow, um, and a lot of parameters actually under the surface water. With the groundwater, um, this is more of the, um, the reservoir. So we have to... Uh, characterize the aquifer, including water level measurement, uh, the flow direction, if if the flow direction is uh, being affected by the, by the project, the field uh, water yield, aquifer trans trans transmissivity, uh, porosity, and permeability. So at the same time, if we want to know the groundwater quality, there are also other parameters that we can do. For example, we can do hardner, hardness, conductivity, Alkalinity, uh, presence of met uh, trace elements, metal trace elements, toxicants, and of course, the bacteria or the microorganisms that is present on our water. Of course, the land, um, we have to include um, landform and land suitability. We also have land use patterns as to what is the current land use pattern of the project, uh, of the area where your project will be located. Of course, we, have, we also have to consider preserves and natural areas. Sound, of course, um, sources and sound levels, and uh, um, which actually attributes with loudness, frequency, and duration. Um, ambient sound levels, like background noise levels at sensitive receptor points, potentially affected by projects should be measured. Um, next is, of course, with the ecology, both biotic and abiotic. Of course, the most important is the vegetation. We also have terrestrial habitats, freshwater habitats, and marine habitats. Uh, we also have to include if our area are located in a water body. Of course, um, we have to include uh, water body. We have to include freshwater aquatic animals, marine animals, and of course, the unique and threatened endangered species. So these are the species uh, we have to study. We have to include its species distribution, population, 
and habitat requirements. So when we say uh, if it's under the ecology, which is biotic and abiotic relationships, especially on abiotic, on flora and fauna, it would always require a uh, diversity um, indices. So Shannon, Shannon diversity index, um, species, endemism rate, um, population density. So these are uh, the few parameters that are always included when it comes to ecology, um, ecology, the attribute of uh, the ecological attribute in the environment. Of course, um, we have to consider also the human dimension. So, of course, the social structure, social attitudes and beliefs, um, the political structure, population and demographics, ethnic, tra ethnic structures, and public services. For example, schools, police, fire, water, wastewater, roads, solid, hazardous, and waste disposal. Because there are also cases that... Um, um, that the project is very beneficial to um, the community. For example, for the EVSU College of Medicine, um, if you, of course, if it's a College of Medicine and we are offering medicine, of course, there is a, there, well, actually the hospital that there, the partnered hospital is actually EVRMC, but of course, all the practicums and all the laboratory classes cannot be done in the EVRMC. So therefore, uh, the building itself, the College of Medicine building itself, will have this kind of facilities in which, therefore, during emergencies, um, like, you know, between life and death and certain emergencies, and the community will be needing an assistance um, for a certain accident, um, you know, it, it might be beneficial for them if, if the College of Medicine will be located in their area, in which that will be one of their, um, one of the things that we will be um, one of the things that uh, that will gain the um, the approval from the com from the community or from the stakeholders. All right, let's go now to the pointers for baseline studies. So pointers for baseline studies, um, of course, the list of data requirements, um, the requirements that you will be needing. Um, of course, collect and review secondary data before collecting primary data. So there will be no overlapping of work. And of course, for you not to waste your time and in collecting the primary data if you already have the, the secondary data. Um, of course, uh, identifying the data gaps for you to know what are the data that you need to acquire for your baseline studies. And of course, validate secondary data. Um, uh, because even if um, there is already a data, of course, you still have to validate that. And of course, design a system of primary data collection. So if you will be doing, um, for example, for water, are you, what parameters will you be um, using? Are you going for um, total solids? Are you going for total hardness? Or are you going for turbidity only? So how are you going to um, design the system of primary data collection? The contents of your baseline study plan should have the purpose and the need of the project. That's very important because, um, again, you know, what, what's the use of having your project if you will not be able to identify um, what is the purpose and why do we need to do the project that uh, you are proposing? Of course, this conceptual frame, conceptual project plan and schedule, uh, the environmental setting, the scope of EIA, and of course, the key issues and concerns um, that you, uh, that was identified, pre-identified already. Identification of data needs and the evaluation of existing data and sustainability. Um, and then, um, of course, we have to prepare our baseline study plans because we have to ensure that relevant data are being collected. Because there might be data that are not really relevant, but we um, gave our time and efforts to gather this data. Of course, we have to establish the current state of the environment, which is the very important part of your EIS study because it will be the reference point. If there is a if there is an adverse impact um, that was monit during the monitoring and audit, um, they can uh, compare that results to your baseline data or to your baseline study. Of course, we have to estimate data collection cost. Um, of course, we cannot pour out our um, we cannot pour out our fund uh, just by doing our baseline study plan. So we have to estimate that. That's yeah, and then estimate project schedule. So, of course, by doing your baseline um, study plans, you will have your Gantt chart. 
the Gantt chart is actually just a table in which you will be having or you will lay down the activities that you will be doing with the corresponding date or corresponding months. And of course, ensure early consideration of project options. So um, as what I showed you on, um, on uh, last meeting on how we um, impacts examined by EIA, there were actually like eight components, but on this graph, on this uh, illustration, I'm showing only four, which is usually um, the four components of the ecosystem that is usually being impacted by certain projects. So of course, we have to consider the human health impacts the social economic impacts, the biophysical impacts, and the geophysical impacts. I uh, usually, on, on, um, again, on uh, a lot of EIA studies, these are usually the four components. They do not, uh, there are only few studies or EIA studies that would have an, an adverse impact on political environment. Um, also, there, well, there are studies that has an, uh, an impact on the cultural environment, but they actually put the cultural under the socioeconomic impacts. They embed the cultural environment to the socioeconomic impacts. So basically, these are the four components that, um, that, is being, um, in, that has an adverse impact or that is being impacted by a certain project. So of course, again, um, the data source um, could be primary sources and secondary sources. But then again, as I told everyone with your EIA study, um, everything will be based on assumptions. But there are um, part of the EIS system that should not be, uh, that will not be um, part of the, that will not be an assumption, I should say. So for example, um, the location, um, the one that was mentioned by um, Engineer earlier. All right, um, thank you for listening. Um, do you have questions? So we will be discussing um, impact prediction and impact evaluation um, on the next meeting. But I will want to entertain any questions that you have. <laughs>